Welcome back to First at Four. I'm meteorologist Jacob Morris here at the National Weather Service in Bismarck, starting a deep dive series talking about how weather balloons are launched by meteorologists to help them understand what the current conditions are in our atmosphere and to help weather forecast models improve their accuracy for predicting the future. We'll start with this week's episode talking about how the weather balloon is prepared to be launched. Weather balloons are launched twice per day at hundreds of locations around the world, including by 68 weather forecast offices across the contiguous U.S., meaning that not every office launches a balloon. For instance, the Weather Service in Grand Forks does not launch weather balloons, while the office in Bismarck does at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time daily. And we'll follow along with the journey of how the balloon is prepared to be launched. So right here we're opening up the balloon. Nice latex balloon here and it's coated with a special coating to kind of keep it from, keep the latex preserved. The balloon is filled with locally supplied hydrogen gas that will help the balloon rise quickly. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the parachute. You got to unravel the parachute so it doesn't stick together when it falls. So then what I do is you got to prepare a six foot string so you can go a little bit over six feet to six but it's got to be a minimum of six feet so the parachute doesn't influence or interfere with the balloon as it goes up we want the most precise data i'm about six feet tall so this works so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the knot and just kind of run the string through it so Boom, just like that. Next, I'm gonna grab another piece of string and we're gonna have to tie this end off right here. So that end right there is gonna have to be tied off when the balloon's done inflating. And the balloon keeps filling up for about 10 minutes until it's about six feet wide, but will expand drastically after it's launched and before it pops. So the balloon is gonna get to the size of a, a small house to a, to a bus. So when it gets up in the upper atmosphere, will be enough PSI. We do about 1,100 PSI here at this office um, based on its latitude. And it will lift the balloon, this mechanism, all the way up and it will shut off the gas. Since we are dealing with hydrogen, everything here is grounded. So all these wires, we have this wire connected to the clip here is grounded. Everything on this table is, is grounded. After the balloon is filled, it's tied off and positioned to get ready for launch. Next, we head inside to prepare the radio sun, which is the small device attached to the string below the balloon, measuring atmospheric conditions as the balloon travels up. So we have a temperature sensor and a dew point sensor and a GPS, and that's pretty much it. The GPS is actually in the instrument here, and here's the antenna right here that transmits the GPS. Once the battery-powered radio sawn is initialized, we can head back outside to attach it to the balloon. We have the string kind of go out approximately about 75 feet because the balloon is going to grow in size when it's in the atmosphere. And when we want to make sure that the radio sawn is far enough away from the balloon so it's not being interference. There's no interference between the balloon maybe blocking, you know, some of the wind speed or temp causing some temperature issues. And so that's generally why we try to go with 75 feet. Now that it's 6 p.m., the balloon is ready to be launched. Next week on Morse Code of Weather, we'll look into how the weather balloon is launched and how the data is collected to help meteorologists understand the current conditions of our atmosphere. Last week, we showed you how the balloons are prepared to be launched, and now we have our latex balloon inflated with hydrogen with the parachute attached to a string six feet below that. 75 feet farther down is the radio sun, which is the instrument that measures temperature, dew point, and GPS coordinates as the balloon travels about 20 miles up in our atmosphere. Weather balloons are launched twice per day at hundreds of locations around the world, including by 68 weather forecast offices across the contiguous U.S., allowing meteorologists to get a snapshot of the current condition of our atmosphere. It's more of kind of like a temperature measurement that you would see from your normal thermometer but aloft and it also measures you know like I said uh, humidity and it, it measures you know pressure and all that kind of stuff so 
we are able to kind of build a bigger 3D picture of what is happening real time. We're launching this weather balloon at 6 p.m. so that the data has enough time to be ingested into the next update of our weather forecast models. The balloon needs to be launched at these specific times, even in high winds or in a blizzard. There are times where we have launched in 50, 60 mile an hour winds, so it is pretty brutal. So the only conditions it would be if we couldn't launch a weather balloon would be in a thunderstorm. We generally try to avoid launching in thunderstorms just due to the lightning issue and you having a hydrogen right. balloon, but also the fact that if you launch the balloon in the thunderstorm, it could corrupt your data as well with the updraft, so you're not getting proper representation of the atmosphere. It's kind of skewed based off of the thunderstorm. One final thing needs to be done before the launch. We have to call the Bismarck Tower to make sure that we are cleared to launch the balloon because we are close to the airport and we don't want to interfere with any international flights. So they have to give us an, ok an okay for us to launch the balloon. So what I do is I walk out far enough away from the building where it's not going to interfere with the balloon and then we kind of just let it go. Now that we have a successful launch, the balloon will rapidly travel up with the first 25,000 feet or 20 minutes of the flight being the most important since this is where most of our weather happens. However, the balloon will continue to travel into the stratosphere before popping once the balloon reaches about 25 feet wide. The balloon can also drift for more than 125 miles from the release point depending on the prevailing winds aloft. However, in calm winds, weather balloons can stay pretty close to their launch point. Once the balloon bursts, the radio sun returns to Earth via the parachute and radio sons can be sent back to the National Weather Service by mail. I think they said about 10% get returned to maybe 5%, so most of them end up in people's fields or they're all biodegradable, so they all that even the parachute, everything will eventually break down. And it's good for the environment, but it's just more of kind of a launch and forget system just based off of cost. It'd be hard to retrieve all of these. Back inside, we can start to see our data coming in from the balloon. So this right here is our skew T. Um, we have our temperature profile right here, followed with our um, dew point. And that's kind of how we see the stability of the atmosphere. And we're kind of able to plot and and track and see if the environment is stable or unstable. This is the completed skew T diagram from our launch on May 21st with temperature in red and dew point in green from the surface to tens of thousands of feet up. The temperature lines which I've highlighted in black are slanted and other lines on the chart help meteorologists to judge how quickly temperatures are changing vertically in our atmosphere. When the lines are closer together, there's more moisture in that layer of the atmosphere, allowing for clouds to form there. Most of the balloon's flight is below freezing, as shown with the area shaded in light blue. Temperatures normally decrease with height in our atmosphere, but when the temperature line moves to the right on our chart, this indicates temperatures are increasing with height, called an inversion, which is a stable layer of the atmosphere. Wind speed and direction data is derived from the GPS coordinates of the radio sun, and these are plotted as well as the balloon ascends. These skewed T charts are invaluable for meteorologists, especially when assessing if conditions are favorable for severe weather. That's why these weather balloons need to be launched twice per day, 365 days of the year, to get accurate data of what's actually happening thousands of feet above our heads. That's it for this deep dive series into weather balloons launched by the National Weather Service. We'll send it back to you in the studio, Jody and Kevin.